hello everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video we'll discuss a uh, interesting topic related to masonry which is uh, stone masonry so in this video i'll be explaining you about what is the definition of a stone masonry what is the sub classification in the stone masonry if you want the notes of this video just click on the description of this video you'll have a link so click on the link and then you can download the notes okay so we'll move on to the topic uh, so coming to stone masonry so we we know what is a brick masonry right next we have stone masonry so what is that so stone masonry is a type of building masonry or is a type of construction where we use stones and to join these stones together we use mortar hence it is stone masonry you can build either foundations or floors or walls or arches or columns anything related any any structural member with the help of stones but you join them together or you establish the bond between them together with the help of a mortar and the stones which are used for uh, masonry construction especially in stone masonry are especially natural rocks so they are cut and uh, sometimes uh, they are dressed properly sometimes they are improperly dressed and based on that also we have the classification that we will see in the next few minutes and uh, stone masonry is more durable coming to the materials used in stone masonry as i have told uh, we have only two materials one is stones one is mortar so stones plus mortar is called stone masonry bricks plus mortar is called a brick masonry as simple as that first coming to we will discuss the first material which is stones so whatever the type of stones you are using for the masonry construction the masonry construction could be a wall or a floor whatever it the stones whatever you are choosing for your construction should be hard they should be tough means they should be able to take the you know um, sudden loads like that they should be hard in nature means when you are constructing you should not get any impressions made on the stones they should not be soft in nature they should be free from all types of sort of fissures cracks any small cavities etc and the selection of the stone for the particular work means for which kind of work you are using the stone it will depend upon uh, the availability of that particular stone and also the importance of the structure say for example if you are trying to construct a exterior wall with the help of a stone so the kind of the stone will be different if you are constructing a interior wall with the help of a stone the kind of stone will be different if you are using uh, a stone uh, you know for uh, any arch inside your house obviously the type of stone used will be different so it all depends upon the importance you will try to get the stone uh, you want some uh, you know uh, some uh, glossy appearance so what you will do you have to use a marble stone like that so it all depends upon the uh, kind of the work and yeah if you are using the stone for flooring purpose you use a marble flooring so again the stone is different so most commonly used stones for masonry are limestone sandstone granite marble etc next uh, we will move to the mortar the second material used for stone masonry is mortar so mortar is the binding material you know mortar is generally made up of a, a binder and a sand and water so it will be mixed to the ratio of 1 is to 3 so mostly we use cement mortar we people also use lime mortar the different kinds of mortar and all it is already there in our playlist you can check in the mortars okay so uh, we take one po one part of cement three parts of sand and we add water to make the mortar and uh, uh, this uh, strength of the mortar or you know not strength how to select the mortar the factors which affect the selecting of the mortar will be the strength means how well you want the bond between the stones and color of the stone based on the color of the stone also you have to choose the mortar if see there are uh, white beautiful marble stones and if you select a cement mortar imagine how the color would look very odd right so you have to select a lime mortar so it also looks white in color and also uh, based on the load coming on the structure if you have more load coming you have to make a good mortar you have to use good cement like that now we'll see the classification of stone masonry we have two types rubble and ashlar 
rubble masonry i already told you in the beginning of this video we use stones which are of, of course naturally occurring which they which are uh, you, which come out from the process of quarrying but these stones uh, can be dressed i told sometimes undressed or partially dressed so in rubble masonry we are going to use the stones which are completely undressed you know what is dressing of stone right we already learned in our earlier videos what is dressing of stone where we cut the stones into particular size and shape based on our requirement if it is not cut which is directly obtained from the quarry obviously it is undressed stone or roughly dressing means on the site just for easy transportation they make a rough dressing that's called rough dressing so the masonry which uses stones which are perfectly undressed or roughly dressed is called rubble masonry as simple as that and the strength of the rubble masonry will depend upon the quality of the mortar you are using to bind the undressed stones and use of long through stones means uh, if you are building suppose a wall what type of through stone you are using in between and also proper filling of the mortar between the joints and spaces why because since the stones are undressed you have lot of spaces now they are not of correct size and shape so you have lot of spaces and all the spaces should be filled properly with the mortar otherwise the stability of the construction would not be retained further rubble masonry is again classified into five types you have coarse rubble masonry uncoursed polygonal flint and dry rubble masonry let's see what are they first one is coarse rubble masonry in coarse rubble masonry the stones in a particular course are in equal heights we already know what is a course right what is course we already learnt in uh, terminology course means the horizontal layer of elements whether it is bricks or it is stones so if in one particular layer or in one particular course simple to tell in your language it's a layer so in one particular layer if all the stones are around equal height then you call it as a coarse rubble masonry the sizes may be different means it may be uh, more width less width we are yeah sorry for the disturbance so whatever may be the width we are not concerning the width of the stone we see that every course is of equal height but remember all the courses may not have the same height means for example uh, say suppose um, yeah we are having a wall so i am telling every course means in every layer the stones are around equal height this is what we are concerned about there is another layer which is coming on this but this height and this height may not be equal means height of the each course may not be same but height of the stones in the same course will be same this is what you need to remember and such kind of uh, rubble masonry course rubble masonry is mostly employed in construction of public buildings in abutments for bridges piers for bridges and also for residential buildings okay so this is how it looks yeah so if you observe say for example if i consider this course around same height of the stones i have arranged together to get this course but see this course and the next course of the wall this course they are not of the same height this is different height this is different height but i am trying to arrange the stones in the same course of equal height this is uncoursed rubble masonry so uncoursed rubble masonry is one of the very cheapest and roughest form of uh, stone masonry it consists of stones of various sizes and various shapes you take it directly from the quarry and you use it so no equal heights nothing here perfectly undressed absolutely taken from the quarry so the bigger uh, lay uh, stones you put it on the bottom and the smaller ones you keep arranging on the top sides and um, uh whatever the spaces you are having in between the stones why because they are undressed right so they are not of equal sizes they are not of equal shape they are not of equal height nothing is same so small small gaps whatever say one stone will be some of this geometry another stone will be something of this geometry so whatever the space here is there it is filled with small small stones what you call spalls 
and further uncoarse double masonry is again of two types you have random and square so random uncoarsed means see remember one thing guys uncoarsed means which are not at all dressed stones are not at all dressed they are directly taken from the core so it is again of two types random and square so in random uncoarsed double masonry what we do is uh, just just the corners of the stone or the edges say something the stone is like this just the corners and the edges will be slightly removed okay so this is uh, the wall which is showing a random uncoarsed rubble masonry we have square so in square uncoarsed rubble masonry what we do is we just try to uh, make the shape of the stone slightly square shape so as to fit in properly okay like this you can see slightly square shaped stone next we have uh, polygonal rubble masonry so whatever kind of stones we are using for such type of masonry construction are irregular polygons you know polygon right which is having more than three sides is called a polygon so irregular polygonal shaped stones will be using so see here this is a polygon this is a polygon so all we arrange them together we arrange them in such a way that there are no joint no gaps there are no voids and we see that there are no vertical joints in the sense now if you see in this figure see uh, where i'm trying to draw see here this is the joint vertical joint for this course see the next one it is here the next joint is here there is no joint just below this one here so we try to avoid vertical joints why because see page problems if suppose there is any see page it will continue through the entire wall and the entire wall will collapse so we try to break the joints this is flint rubble masonry so where flint stone is available there we use this uh, flint rubble masonry they are uh, irregular shaped uh, small uh, stones of silica they are extremely hard but they are very brittle in nature this you can find near seashores like that and um, generally the thickness of this flint stone will be around 18 8 to 15 centimeters and also the length will be around 15 to 30 centimeters so the rubble masonry made especially with flint stone is flint rubble masonry so like this next is dry rubble masonry so uh, these are the rubble masonry constructions performed without the use of mortar so till now what we told stone masonry means stone plus masonry we told right so wherever where the masonry is not at all using any mortar you call it as a dry rubble masonry then you might ask how are we joining the or how are we creating the bond between the stones we create the bond with the help of small small uh, stone pieces we fill it means if you have uh, two stones like this something like this instead of filling mortar here we add small small stones so in villages the walls will be like this only there is no mortar next is ash flower masonry so what is ash flower masonry when till now we talked about rubble masonry where we are using partially dressed stones or roughly dressed stones or completely undressed stones when you talk about ash flower masonry this kind of masonry will use stones which are using dressed stones means the stones which are exactly cut into proper sizes proper shapes so such type of construction using such type of stones will possess uniformity okay and yeah the thickness of the joints what we provide will be around 3 mm which is arranged in various patterns so the gap between the two stones the motor how much it should be filled is the thickness will be around 3 mm and the size of the stone blocks must be in proportion with the thickness of the wall obviously so ashlar masonry is again classified into five types same like our uh, rubble masonry we have ashlar fine we have ashlar rough tool rock and quarry faced ashlar block in course ashlar chamfered let's see what are they first one is ashlar fine masonry so obviously remember one thing ashlar means dressed stone so in uh, dressed to stone only if you are using the stones which are cut into uniform size uniform shape which almost look like a rectangle 
then that is called as a ashlar fine masonry this kind of masonry construction will provide proper joints horizontal and vertical they it looks very perfect in nature likewise what you can see in the figure but this is very costly why because to get all the stones of exact size and shape you have to spend more money next is ashlar rough tool so this kind of uh, masonry construction takes the help of stones whose sides are finely chiseled dressed means we are concerned with the sides of the stone so the sides will be uh, shaped properly with the help of a chisel okay that's called as a uh, ashlar rough tool uh, masonry and uh, the face of the stones is made rough by means of tools so the face is not left as we have seen in this the face of the stone is fine no here it is not fine a little bit rough next is rock and quarry face so as the name itself it is telling it will possess the face which is coming from the quarry uh, means when you get from the quarry how it looks it looks like that only so in this type of masonry what we do is uh, we provide a 25 mm wide strip with the help of a chisel around the circumference of every stone around the perimeter of every stone okay and the remaining portion of the face is left in the same form as it is received just for you whatever stone you are getting uh, we try to provide a small gap means uh, 25 mm width around the complete circumference of the the complete periphery of the stone okay so like this you can see here see the voids the gaps so of uh, in i mean around every stone there will be this gap next is ashlar block in course so it is a combination of a rubble masonry and ashlar masonry rubble masonry means what consisting of undressed stones ashlar masonry means what consisting of dressed stones if you combine them you call it ashlar block in course so this kind of uh, uh, wall or construction is mostly used in wall for example if you want the front of the wall to look beautiful you can use ashlar masonry means you can use dressed stones but if you are not concerned with the back side say if it is a compound wall everybody is looking at the outside of your wall so there you use nice stones back side you don't want to use good stones you don't want to spend more money then you can use a rubble masonry okay so the front side or where you use dressed stones it is the facing of the wall similarly the backing of the wall would be under the stone so that's called as a ashlar block in course next last one we have ashlar chamfer masonry so you can see here this is a wall corner you can see some special type of uh, stones provided here right the stones which are chamfered in nature you know chamfering right say suppose this is a corner when i chamfer this corner this particular corner I will show you. So, if I chamfer this, it becomes like this. So, I am bevelling the edges. I am creating a sharp edge. Okay. So, here you can see all the stones are having beveled edges here. This one, this one, here. So, this is called as an ashlar chamfered masonry. So, the vertical strip of stones which are having or the vertical strip actually this white color stones together are called as a strip the vertical strip which is having a chamfered stone the sides are chamfered then it is called as a ashlar chamfered masonry so this is all about the stone masonry i hope everybody understood the video thanks for watching